Hi everyone, Blake Jones here. In this episode of How Do You Do That, I'm going to go over the basic color grading tools that you will be working with in Resolve 19. These are the tools that will allow you to quickly and easily grade your shot in Resolve. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is have the clips that we have placed into the media pool area put into a timeline. We need this so that we can do color grading with Resolve. So I'm just gonna highlight these clips like so. Right mouse click on it and then select and then select create new timeline using selected clips. Now, as you can see, I have a second timeline here. And then if I double click on it, it takes me directly to the edit page where I can see all my clips together here. So now that I move over to the color page, I can now start working with my color grading tools. Now, for example, we have primary wheels, and then we also have an HDR grading tool. This is intended for HDR grading because it allows you to grade in different areas of the signal. Primary corrections. So you can grade just in the light areas of the picture or just in the dark areas and things like this. However, for our application, we're going to just use the straight primary color wheels. Now, when you come to the color wheels on the upper right, you have next to the color wheel button, you have color bars. This is a different representation of how the grading controls are actually represented to you. And then finally, what we have is what we call log grading. Log grading changes the method for uh, how the color grading tools react. So basically, this changes from lift, gamma, and gain to shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, what happens here is that you have a very sharp cutoff between the shadows are done discreetly the midtones discreetly and the highlights discreetly. So this way you can work very well when you're working with what we call log files. Now for this situation, I would not recommend operating this way. I would recommend going back to the color wheels. And then we have here in the center, what we have what we call qualifiers. This is for qualifying certain colors in the picture that need special attention. We'll go over these in a moment. And then also what happens too is you have something here called the color warper, which is a variation of this because this will allow you to pick up certain colors and drag it back and forth and change the color of different areas. And then you have on top of this, you have a thing here called color slice. This is like a predefined qualifiers. There is also another way of using predefined qualifiers in Resolve, which we will also cover as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is let's go back to our primary wheels and let's come to a shot like here of the airplane taking off. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I look at my scopes and I can see here that the lift is slightly off balance because as you can see, the red channel is down, the green and blue are up a little bit and the all three are elevated a little bit. So what we wanna do first is even those up so as you can see now, when I even them up, the lift area becomes more neutral. And now what I want to do is use the ring to bring that down. And then we just come over here. Just tweak that a little bit, just to bring the blue up a little bit. And now our lift area is beginning to look how we want it to be. 
Now, if I want this display to be a little bit brighter, what I can do here is I can come over and turn up my parade display here, like so. And now I can see more detail and it's a little bit brighter for me to see. Okay, the next thing I want to do is work on the gain. So as you can see here, if I change the grading here, it's affecting the entire picture. It'll either go bluer, greener, or even red. So as you can see, when I even those out, then it becomes more neutral there. Let's just take it somewhere in there. Good. So now what we're going to do is bring that up to here, like so. And now the picture is starting to already look pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to give my look to the picture. I want it to be a little bit punchier. So what I'm going to do is use the gamma. The gamma control will basically affect the lift and the gain together because it's affecting the center part of the signal here. So what I'm going to do here, bring this down a bit, just to make it just a little bit punchier, bring my gain up. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick that I use sometimes. And that is, as you can see, if I bring the gain up too high, you see it's starting to clip here. But, it gives me a nice bright picture. So I don't want to lose any detail in the highlights, which is what I'm doing now. So there is a trick to do this. So what you do is you come to the first button here, which is called curves. And then you take the highlight softening and then you turn that down. And as you can see, your detail returns now. You're no longer clipped in the highlights anymore. Okay, so now we've got our base grade for this. Now, what we can do is actually create a specific look in the picture. Now, what I usually do is I always leave my base grade in the first node. And then I add a second node using option S to add a serial node there. And now what I can do here is I can come over here and make it a warmer grade, or a cooler grade, however I want to. I can go through and dictate my grade like so. Now what I can do is then add a, another little trick. As you can see here, the default for saturation is 50. If I bring this up to, let's say 56, it looks pretty much the same. And the difference that you will see is that you've got 6% extra saturation in the picture. So in case I wanna pick up the grass or the sky or something like that, it makes it easier for me to work with because there's more information for me to grab on. And I'm gonna show you now how to do that. So what we do next is we come over to the qualifiers. And now, once we're in the qualifying area, and if I come over here, as you can see, my cursor changes to an eyedropper. So all I have to do here is click on this. And then this button here on the top will show me highlight. So as you can see here, it's highlighted the sky area. Now there's certain information in the picture that maybe we don't want to include. So for example, here, this bright reflection in the airplane. If we want to exclude that, you can come down to the luminance high, as you can see by taking that down, and you can take that down a bit. You don't want to take down everything, just a little bit like that. As you can see, it's taking high and low, adjust it. And then the same thing goes for my...
adjust this as well. And then what we can do is we have our matte finesse, which will clean up this. As you can see, when I turn this here, you can change this up a bit. And this cleans up my matte signal for this quite a bit. Okay. Now what happens is that when I come out of this now, I can come back to my primary controls here and just grade only in the sky area of the picture. Okay, so that's basically how a qualifier works. Now, another thing that happens is that we spoke earlier about color slice, which is a fixed qualification for skin and red, green, blue, yellow, cyan, magenta. Now, there's another way of doing this as well. So if I come over here, make another node, and then come up to, let's say I want to highlight the green in the picture, click on color, scroll down to presets, select green, and then if I looked here, and then if I come to highlight, I can see what it found. Now, because it's not precisely green, it's a little yellow green in there. Just change the centering and move it a little bit. Now you'll see the green information returns. Now, once that's in, you can turn off highlight and then you can change this to what you like. Or if you just say, I want to give it more saturation or I want to change the hue of that green. I can change it to how I like, like so. So these are the ways that you can actually work with your color grading tools very quickly and easily inside Resolve. So now what happens, the other tools that we were mentioning, for example, like um, things like uh, Color Warper, for example. Color Warper means that Wherever you are in the picture, as you can see, wherever I put the cursor, that's where it will be in the color wheel. Now, for example, if it's here, the slices are sliced into six and six. So think of this as just like a pie. And the slices are very large. So as you can see, if I change the color here, it's affecting everything in the picture, which is what we don't want, okay? So what we want to do is we want to give it more slices. So what we'll do here is let's just make it the max, max it out, okay? So now, as you can see, if I change it here, it's only affecting that part of the picture. So this is another tool that you can use for certain situations only. So don't get, you know, it's not best not to be overwhelmed by certain things like this. So basically what we're going to go over here again is we go first my lift, gain, gamma. Okay. And then we make another node and then we come over, use our eyedropper for the red, come to highlight, now, as you can see here, the vector hue that was selected by the system for the red of the airplane is very narrow. So what I want to do is widen that up a bit and then just move it back and forth and get it in the middle. So this way we can pick up the whole airplane this way. Okay, once we're happy with that, we can take that out. And then now we can come over here and change this to what we want. And then as you can see, since you're doing it like so, you can come through here and fly it. 
see the plane flying. You don't have to track anything because you're locked on to the color by the hue, saturation, and luminance. Now what you can do is if you want to use this as a reference for another shot, you can right mouse click here in the viewer, select grab still. Now this will give me, as you can see, if I come to this shot and if I double click on this, I can use this as a reference for color matching. This will turn off the wipe here. The other thing too is if you want to take parts of that color correction, you highlight that still in the gallery area and then you select the node graph here and this is the contents of the color correction. So then you can actually come over here and then drop it into that shot if you want to. So there we have it. For more information about training services, have a look in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to my uh, YouTube channel so this way you will be alerted to all the new upcoming videos. Also, I've just started a podcast channel on Spotify where I interview people in the industry. And uh, also the first two episodes will be about myself actually. So you'll know a little bit more about me as a colorist and how I learned the trade and how I actually learned about working with film and the film industry in Hollywood. Also think about becoming a Patreon member. There are a lot of great perks there. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot for watching.